our sun. Scenario 1. Something strange just happened now. Every TV channel, the news, they're all talking about a black hole that came closer to us, on the spot where our sun used to be. You can even see an accretion disk, and the background of the sky looks kind of distorted, which means it got really close. Normally, black holes are so far away that we can't see them with the unaided eye. You can't even see them with a telescope directly. What's it doing here so close? And where's the sun? Did the black hole swallow it? The sun used to be in the center of our solar system, far enough not to burn us, but still close enough to give us light, warmth, and beautiful scenes when it rises in the east and goes to rest in the west. Hey, this one even rhymes. <laughs> well, it gave us life. The most massive body in our solar system contains 99.8% of its total mass. It's so wide, you could fit more than a million Earths inside of the sun. Maybe our sun turned into a black hole. But it's way too early for that to happen. I mean, that's how they form. When enormous stars come to the end of their life cycle and explode, which is called a supernova, they end up collapsing on themselves, becoming very small. It's a tiny size and a huge mass. That's what makes black holes' gravity so strong, and even light that comes too close can't escape. And all the stars in the universe are shrinking, and will disappear at some moment. Our sun loses 4 million tons of mass every second, and eventually, the only energy left in the universe will be generated by black holes. A black hole is surrounded by dust, gas, and radiation. The radiation is very dangerous, so we hope our planet won't come near it. Our solar system doesn't have light anymore. No light and no heat either, so even Mercury and Venus will probably get covered in ice pretty soon, not to mention Earth. Do I need to say nothing will survive this new ice age? The only salvation might come from the accretion disk that spins so fast it generates heat, but that's too many chances to take. Still, at least if the black hole has the same exact mass as the sun before it, all the planets will remain in the same orbits, Earth included. But if it has a mass bigger than our sun, which is something our scientists are currently trying to figure out, then bye-bye, solar system. It was nice knowing you. Scenario 2 Oh no, what's happening? It was supposed to be a nice sunny day, but now you see darkness descending so abruptly. How come it's night, yet the clock says it's 2 p.m., and the moon looks different? The TV reports say our sun is gone, and due to some mysterious events, the moon is not orbiting the Earth anymore. It's in the center of our solar system now. We don't have much time left. Since the sun is not in the center of our solar system, we now have 8 minutes and 20 seconds to become aware of it. It may take millions of years for the sun's energy to travel from its core to the surface, but 8 minutes and 20 seconds is exactly how long it takes for sunlight to reach Earth. The light takes a journey across 93 million miles, which is the distance that separates us from the sun. We are not in the habitable zone anymore. The habitable zone is the distance from a star in our case, the sun, at which liquid water could exist on the surface of a planet. Now that the sun's gone, its light won't reach us anymore, and our planet will gradually become a frozen, lifeless rock. Who knows if we'll have enough time to come up with some technologies that would provide us with the solar energy we need to sustain life on Earth. If not, well, millions or billions of years later, scientists from some other civilizations would explore it, trying to find evidence if life ever even existed there. It would be the same as we do with Mars and other planets in our solar system, trying to figure out if they've always been lifeless or if there might be a sign that some organisms used to live there. Something else, also vital for our life, travels at the speed of light. Gravity. Without the sun, for roughly eight more minutes, the planets would continue circling the empty center of our solar system until the clock ticks and they finally drift somewhere into an unknown direction of outer space. Our moon doesn't have a strong enough gravity to keep us in place. It can't shine so brightly to give us warmth and support life. It's so far, we can barely see it now. Without the moon that peacefully travels close to our planet as it used to, we can see tides are getting lower incredibly fast. Oh, and it's becoming really windy. Winds are so much stronger and faster now. When things were normal, our planet sat at a 23.5 degree tilt which is the reason we had changing weather and seasons. 
Now the tilt is so extreme, it's getting very cold, very fast. And our time is almost up. People are screaming, everyone's in panic. We still have maybe one minute left until we sink into eternal darkness. Scenario number three. We're not sure what exactly happened and how the life we carelessly lived yesterday came to an end. No one could predict it, but it seems that out of nowhere, a giant neutron star took the spot where our sun used to be. It's not something we'd recognize on our own. We just noticed something was different and the sun kind of got smaller and weirder. The rest we heard on the news and no one knows how it happened. Maybe our sun is somewhere behind the neutron star or the star pushed it out of our solar system and into an unknown direction? A neutron star is the densest space object we know about. It has almost twice as much mass as our sun, but it's all squeezed into a star only 10 miles, 15 kilometers across, which is about the size of a city on Earth. A neutron star forms when a huge star runs out of fuel. It collapses in a big explosion. Its very central region, the core, collapses which is why every electron, negatively charged particle, and proton, positively charged particle, crush together into a neutron, which is either uncharged or neutrally charged. We're in a very tricky situation now, basically waiting for our end to come. This neutron star has gravity two billion times stronger than the one Earth has. This means our new sun will pull all the planets in our solar system towards itself and eventually destroy them. It's already started. For the first time that we know of, the planets are leaving their stable orbits, attracted by the powerful force of the neutron star. It's becoming chaotic pretty fast. And it won't stop there. A neutron star rotates more than 700 times every second, which is incredibly fast. Our sun rotates once every 27 days. So after it destroys all the planets, including us, this star will continue whirling throughout the universe at about one-fifth the speed of light. Maybe it will slow down and fizzle out with time, but maybe not. After thousands of years, many neutron stars begin to slow down and blow out. But that doesn't always happen. If it meets another star, it will orbit it and start to feed off its atmosphere until it collapses at some point and turns into a giant black hole. Eh, our sun was going to burn out anyway. Until the neutron star showed up, the sun was 4.6 billion years old, which was about halfway through its lifespan. It had already burned off about half of its hydrogen stores and had enough supplies for another 5 billion years. It was eventually supposed to end up the size of the Earth. After running out of fuel, it would have simply collapsed. It would have retained its enormous mass, but its volume was going to be similar to that of our planet. No sun, no life. So the result would have been basically the same. But this way, it would have been a slow process. Who knows if humans would even inhabit this solar system in those times. But with neutron stars, things move towards the end pretty quickly. And it's way more chaotic. If the neutron star was going crazy somewhere far away in another galaxy, we'd only see it in the shape of a distant flashing light that we call a pulsar. But this way, boom! You're on a plane heading to an important astronomy convention when you see a large figure outside your window that eclipses the whole sun. You spit out all of your coffee and everyone in the plane stares outside in shock. You then notice that it has rings like Saturn. You were supposed to fly to Japan, but you're forced to land in California. As soon as you land, you look up in the sky and see some more giant planet-like structures floating around in the sky. Everyone is taking pictures and trying to figure out what's going on. Suddenly, you notice a huge ball of fire crashing down near the airport. Everyone scrambles for safety, and luckily, it ends up in the middle of the runway with no one around. The bad news is there's no more runway for planes to land. Everyone huddles together for safety, and more large objects appear in the sky. All communications have ceased or broken down since these large objects have ruined all the satellites. Some scientists nearby mention that these objects are the planets of the solar system going within the same proximity as our moon. Mercury and Venus look like moons, but Saturn is occupying a lot of sky real estate. You tell those scientists that you're an astronomer. They invite you to join them on a trip to Antarctica to the observatory station in the South Pole. 
They need every mind to help solve this mystery. You get on a ship with the coordinates set to Antarctica. The waves are extremely rough for typical daylight and non-stormy weather. You finally make it to the shore of the continent after a few days and have to get in a snowmobile all the way to Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. Over here, you and a group of scientists will figure out what's going on. You weren't prepared for the freezing temperatures, even though it's July. You arrive at the station and see all your fellow scientists running around with paperwork and blurting out stuff about planets orbiting our atmosphere. You arrive at the conference room where the lead scientist explains what's going on. One by one, the planets are coming closer to us until they're aligned with the moon, but they still don't know why and how. Venus arrived first, and now Saturn is getting closer. The moon is around 240,000 miles away from Earth, and it affects the tides of the oceans and seas with its gravitational pull. Since water is less dense than land, we can see the tides change. So high tides occur when the Earth is pulled towards the moon. And since the other planets are coming closer to Earth, the gravitational pull is erratically changing. In a couple of hours, Saturn will be in the same distance as our moon. You head to the large telescope and observe the planets. Any plane or helicopter won't fly properly and won't have the proper radar technology to help it. You keep observing and notice Mars getting closer to Earth. You get news that tidal waves are rising very often now, and some island nations are even being washed away. Good thing they got evacuated beforehand. With Mars closing in, you notice Neptune also getting closer. You can feel the gravity on Earth fluctuate with every step you take. You report your findings to the lead scientist, and the only way for survival is to quickly build bunkers far away from oceans and seas that can host many people before the other planets close in. A team of engineers arrive and start building. Wave after wave of survivors come and settle into the bunkers, practically built overnight. With every hour, more planets are getting closer. Mars and Neptune have already settled in with Mercury, Venus, and Saturn. Pluto and Uranus are now visible to the unaided eye and are making their way towards Earth. The gravitational pull is getting completely out of hand. The snow in the Antarctic desert remains floating for several seconds whenever someone walks on it. You can jump a lot higher. It's now nighttime, but the sky isn't dark as usual. The planets are reflecting a lot more sunlight than our moon. It's barely visible now. With more observations, you notice comets and meteorites flying very close to our atmosphere. Some are even crashing down on Mars and Neptune. Everyone can see it from Earth. Other space debris also finds its way into Earth's atmosphere. But you notice something strange. The planets are now orbiting Saturn. You check your calculations and find out that the planet's positions are now aligned with Saturn's orbit. That's because it has the biggest mass among all the planets. Saturn's rings are made up of ice particles, some as large as a bus and others as tiny as pebbles. But they're all crashing and interfering with the other planets. No one can feel the orbit shift at first, but later you can start to feel it. With this happening, earthquakes and volcanoes are bound to happen. This is why everyone, including yourself, is packing up and ready to flee. Antarctica has dozens of volcanoes hidden beneath the frozen ice. Some are underground, while some are right on top. Saturn's gravitational pull is much stronger than Earth's gravitational pull on the moon. This will cause the inner core to react a lot more and kickstart those earthquakes and volcano eruptions. Everyone packs up super quick and heads to the choppers to fly to South Africa. These choppers were designed to have a direct course without the need for radars to guide them. You arrive in South Africa, which is mainly covered in water. The chopper takes you closer to the center, and then you travel to the Sahara Desert. The plane's surface with nothing around it will be the best option for safety. But you look up in the sky and see another planet closing in. It's Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system. If Earth were the size of a grape, then Jupiter would be the size of a basketball. It's approaching quickly. Many of the other planets automatically make way for it, including Saturn. You're on the road heading to the Sahara, even though it'll take days to reach by car. 
The sky is dark during the day, since most planets are blocking the sun. You finally make it to the Sahara Desert with other scientists, and to your surprise, a whole city was erected in just a month when the planets started showing up. You settle in your dorm, but still have a lot of work to do. A couple of days later, Jupiter breaches the atmosphere and completely eclipses us. But Earth is now rotating around it, and it's much quicker than orbiting the Sun, since Jupiter is smaller. But since Saturn is also big, Earth keeps getting tossed from orbit to orbit, like two people playing a ball game with each other. So with that happening, people on Earth are experiencing different gravitational pulls from time to time. The tidal waves keep getting stronger, and volcanoes are erupting everywhere. Since the Earth's core is getting hotter, the temperature on Earth is also changing. And with a lack of sunlight most of the time, much of the plant life is having a hard time trying to keep up. Crops are harder to plant with natural sunlight, so people are turning to artificial lighting and greenhouses. Air and space travel are impossible. The International Space Station is completely ruined, along with the satellites orbiting space. That's why cell phones and the internet can't work. Gravity is even more dysfunctional than ever. Six months later, humanity has found some way of coping with the new normal, but things are constantly being updated. The number of hours in a day has changed, as well as days that compose a week. This used to be measured with the moon phases. A month used to be the moon achieving all phases from none to full moon, and so on. But Earth's moon has disappeared with the cluttered, disorganized planets. What happens when a star runs out of its fuel? First of all, paradoxically, it grows to a million times its original size. You see, when the core of a star runs out of hydrogen, it starts contracting under the weight of its own gravity. But some hydrogen fusion continues in the upper layers. While the core contracts, it heats up. This causes the upper layers of the star to heat up too and expand. The radius of the star increases. As the star grows, it engulfs any matter, even its own planets, in its wake. Astronomers have watched stars right before or straight after swallowing entire planets, but until recently, they have never seen the process itself. Scientists from different universities have reported that for the first time in history, they've observed a star swallowing a planet. And this tragic event happened not somewhere in a faraway galaxy, but in our own Milky Way some 12,000 light years away from us. Astronomers spotted an outburst from a star, which is around 0.8 to 1.5 times the mass of our sun, near the eagle-like constellation Aquila. It became over 100 times brighter than usual in a mere 10 days, and after that, it quickly faded away. Even more interesting, this white-hot flash was followed by a longer-lasting signal that was also colder than the first flash. And this combination, my friend, could only mean one thing. The star engulfed a nearby planet. What planet was it? Astronomers believe it could be a boiling hot world from 1 to 10 times the mass of Jupiter. Such planets are also called hot Jupiters. They're giant exoplanets similar to the Jupiter we have in our solar system that need less than 10 days to orbit their stars. The planet we're talking about had been gradually spiraling toward the star until it was pulled into its atmosphere and, eventually, into the core of the perishing star. This galactic feast happened between 10,000 and 15,000 years ago when the star was about 10 billion years old. And given its respectable age, the swallow itself happened lightning fast in one fell swoop. This is very different from other hot Jupiters, which were quite delicately nibbled by their stars. Astronomers aren't sure if there are any other planets orbiting this star, perhaps at a safer distance. But even if there are, thousands of years will probably pass before they become the star's main course or dessert. In any case, now that astronomers know what they should search for, they're going to be on the lookout for more cosmic gulps. Because one day, our planet, as well as part of our solar system, will suffer the same fate. Everything around us will be gone in a flash. But you may relax and breathe out. It won't happen for another 5 billion years. That's when the sun is supposed to burn out and expand so much that it will swallow the inner planets of the solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. If people manage to colonize some other world by that time, which should be at least 10,000 light years away from Earth, 
they would be able to observe this catastrophe. The sun would suddenly become much, much brighter, and it would eject some material into space. It would swallow several planets, including Earth, before nonchalantly setting back to what it was. But stars are not the only things in the universe that swallow other space objects. There's another kind of cosmic monsters that munch on everything, even light. Have you guessed? Right. I'm talking about ruthless black holes. But what is more interesting, they not only devour stuff, but also seem to spit it out. Not so long ago, scientists found out that the supermassive black hole at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy seems to be leaking. Why is it a game changer? Because it might mean that this black hole, called Sagittarius A asterisk, whose mass is 4.1 million times the mass of our sun, isn't a sleeping giant as previously thought. It might still be active, and this leakage may be the whole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. During the research, the team of astronomers used the Hubble Space Telescope. It helped them spot a jet that looked like a blowtorch. It was pushing into clouds of hydrogen at the center of our galaxy. The jet seemed to spew gas like a hose directed into a pile of sand. This often happens around active black holes, surrounded by the material, pulled toward them by their immense gravitational pull. Some of this material gets into the black hole, but a small part of it gets swept outward by powerful magnetic fields. The research suggests that when a giant gas cloud gets too close to our supermassive black hole, it gets swallowed, and then the hole belches mini jets of matter. Fermi bubbles might be the result of the belches that happened around two to four million years ago. But recently, scientists have discovered another giant glowing bubble of hot gas. It aligned with the jet stretching for 35 light years or more from the supermassive black hole. Astronomers suspect that the jet could have plowed into this bubble of gas and inflated it. Now I'll tell you something even creepier. There seem to be black holes that might be eating each other. Well, kind of. They're actually trying to share their meal at the moment, but who knows what will happen in the near future. But let me go into detail. Astronomers have spotted two supermassive black holes feasting on the cosmic material of two merging galaxies in distant space. These giants have been located with the help of the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array of Telescopes, also known as ALMA. These telescopes are in northern Chile's Atacama Desert, Scientists originally used them to watch two merging galaxies located about 500 million light years away from Earth. Astronomers have also noticed that two gigantic black holes were growing alongside each other not far from the center of the coalescing galaxy, UGC 4211. Apparently, these black holes came across each other when their host galaxies collided. One of the black holes is around 200 million times the mass of our Sun, and the other is a bit smaller about 125 million times the mass of our star. Even though they aren't visible directly, the black holes are surrounded by bright clusters of warm, glowing gas and stars. All of this has been tugged close by the black hole's gravitational pull. Times will pass and these black holes will start circling each other, and eventually they will collide, creating one, probably even bigger black hole. Scientists have been observing these black holes across multiple wavelengths of light and have come to the conclusion that they are kind of unique. They're located the closest to each other astronomers have ever seen. The distance between them is a mere 750 light years, which astronomically speaking, is just next door. Even more exciting, this distance is close to the limit of what modern technologies can detect. Interestingly, such ginormous merges are more typical for distant galaxies. This makes it harder for Earth-based telescopes to see them but the sensitivity of ALMA helped astronomers observe those bright and compact regions where matter swirls around black holes. Imagine how surprised astronomers were when instead of one black hole, they saw two of them, munching on the dust and gas stirred up by the massive space merger. The most important thing about this discovery is that it may mean that such black hole binaries are likely to be much more common than we previously thought. And if pairs of black holes are so common, it might make it easier for us to study gravitational waves that occur when black holes collide. Such waves are also known as ripples in space-time. If we talk about the recently discovered pair of black holes, it might still take them several hundred million years to crash into each other. But by observing their behavior, scientists can figure out how many binary black holes that are about to collide exist in the universe.